Nmap, for those of you who haven't used it, is a <coughs> is a network uh, discovery tool as well as a scanning tool. So it scans things like uh, ports, open ports, um, if hosts are up or not, things like that. Um, honestly, I've used it quite a bit, but I haven't really delved into what it can do. But this talk made me definitely want to do that because uh, the one that they specifically highlighted was HTTP enumeration. So you can actually check for specific files and, uh, and specific traces to see what a website's running. Because NMAP normally tell you, hey, Port 80 is open and it's running a, a thing. And you don't really know what that is. But with uh, leveraging the scripting engine, you can tell if it's a WordPress site or if it's a Drupal site. Sometimes it'll even pull down the README files that people leave in there so you'll know the exact version. <laughs> Stuff like that. Um, there was also a talk on social engineering. I didn't go to that one. All 100, did you go to that one? No. I did. You did. Okay, Zach. Real quick, um, the badges from TourCon are being passed around. These badges are actually um, net wireless network spectrum analyzers. So they have, they, they, every time a packet receives a packet from Wi Fi, then it, uh, it flashes a light. Yes. Are they supposed to have batteries? They are supposed to have batteries when they work. Okay. But I didn't bring mine. So one's mine, one's Alejandro's. I mean, those are the badges that everyone gets to work on. So the power is the wireless? I'm sorry? The power is the wireless? No, no, not, not this model, not yet. Next year. So uh, social engineering, um, basically it was a guy who, I don't really know much of his background, he's been doing social engineering for a while, and he talked about um, different ways that you can interact with people. Does anyone know what social engineering is? Who knows what social engineering is? Okay, social engineering is basically the manipulation of people to get what you want. It's very simple, it's very basic, it happens every day in normal communications and business. Social, uh, that's social interaction. Social engineering is the specific application of techniques to manipulate people. Um, so things like advertising, marketing, uh, that, those sorts of things. Calling up an IT department saying, oh yeah, you know, it's not working, what's the password to this thing? And they'll just go, oh, okay, it's this. And they're not really supposed to give that out, but it makes their life easier. So you're you're taking that social bridge of laziness and you're leveraging it in your favor to be able to break into things without actually having to do much work. Instead of doing a, a, a physical or a software attack, you're doing a social attack. So you're getting information from people that you wouldn't otherwise have access to because you're manipulating them. Um, and so the, the talk that he gave was all about ways that you can interact with people on the phone, um, things to do, things not to do. Um, so, for instance, um, sometimes what will happen is someone will catch on that you're doing social engineering and uh, they will stop talking to you and try to alert the, let's say you're trying to, you're at a company, you're calling into a company and you're trying to get information from them. Uh, that specific group that you just talked to is going to know that you are a, a con man or a scammer, but if you quickly switch to another group, then you can talk to them and try to convince them to give you information. So he's talking about limited time windows, um, just general. He said, you know, it's always better to go talk to someone in person than on the phone. You're going to get more information. You can read micro expressions. Those seem lie to me. The show, lie to me. Okay, that's a really awesome show, and in that it actually talks a lot about uh, lie detection and those sorts of things. And one of the things they talk about is micro expressions, which is a quick flash of emotion that um, we don't consciously control. So. That was that was the social engineering. I also did not go to the cross-site scripting talk. Who did? I did. Zach did. All hundred. Did you go to the cross-site scripting talk? That yes, is cool. Yeah. Is that, you should have more comments. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so cross-site scripting, if I'm not mistaken, is you inject something to a website one way. Correct me if I'm wrong. And when the user accesses it, access it access it from somewhere else is it'll run that using JavaScript or something else on their end and exploit their computer. Why are you looking at me? No. Not You're the Oracle. Yes. So the examples he had was um, other programs such as Skype and Google Earth that use uh, the same Wait, are these the slides look like? <clears throat> Did he, uh, no, I don't think, I didn't see um, I didn't see the slides.
bottle to lit, and it's going to open. And she just got it. Like, no key, just using two simple pieces of metal. So, don't buy a girl. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really simple, and it's actually kind of soothing, because looking at it does nothing for you. So, for me, it's kind of like when I'm developing film in a dark room. It's, there's no visual aspect to it. It's all about the feel. You can close your eyes, you can stare off in the space like a retard. It doesn't matter. But it, it's kind of a soothing thing, it's interesting, and it's all physical, it's all feel. There's not a, real, a lot of science. Well, I mean, there is a lot of science to it, but while you're doing it, it's more of a feel thing. Disclaimer, don't pick locks in public ever. And don't pick don't locks that aren't yours. Yeah. yeah, pick your locks and do it at home in the privacy of your own home. So yeah, we had uh, several people from Trump. So that's Kevin, last year's president. He might, not, he might recommend, he might not. He was there uh, picking up a pair of handcuffs, taking them off. He was doing it behind his back later. That was interesting. Uh, okay, so this was probably the most interesting thing in Torcom was the Tamper Evident Contest. And I was really interested, I really wanted to be involved, but I didn't have any sleep, so I went to bed. Zach and Alejandro, I think, no? Um, Zero One, you, you worked on it, right? Kind of, I, I helped Zach. Yeah, you helped Zach. Uh, Zach, who else helped you with it? That was me. It was, it was, it was, it was you and Zero One? Okay, well, yeah, but it's really nifty. Why don't you let them know what it is, and I'll okay. cycle through the thing. So basically, a tamper evidence contest is um, there are companies that rely on information being sealed. So forensics, um, security companies, mail companies, package delivery companies, those sorts of things. And so they need devices that will reveal when someone has had access to information or a package. Basically what that means is um, you have tamper evident devices. So it shows evidence when someone has tried to mess with your package or your information. Um, and so it's things like tape that when you peel it away will never be the same again, uh, single-use locks that can't be undone unless you cut them, those sorts of things. Well, those, and, and in the camper evidence contest at Torcon, it was all physical devices. There's software equivalents, but in this case it was all tapes and locks and those sorts of things. Um, and so because they're physical devices, just like locks, there's attacks against those. You can defeat them um, knowing a little bit about how the system works. So this was the box that I was handed. Um, and basically, the, the story behind this was, I was kind of interested in this, wanted to do it, but generally you need like a team of people. And I didn't really have time to put that together, so I didn't sign up for the contest. I get to the con, and I went to go talk to the guy who was running it, and there was just a box sitting there on the table. And I was asking him, hey, I've never done this before. How can I get into it? You know, and he said, well, one of the teams didn't show up, so you can just take that box and compete. So I did. Um, and uh, so this was given to me, and it's got two pieces of white tape, four pieces of red tape, and then a whole bunch of stuff inside that you can't see. So the tape, it, the box is all mangled now, because um, to judge it, they basically tore it apart. But when I got it, the tape, um, it, I know it's hard to see, but it says open, open, open across it. Before, the first time the tape is applied, it's just red. And then the first time you peel it off, it, it shows that it's been peeled off. And so um, uh, it would make it hard to get into the box. So what I did was I peeled off this white tape, and then I peeled back um, one piece of red tape. And that allowed me to get into half the box like this. Um, so there's a whole bunch of uh, things in here. Let me pull them out. Um, the, the back story of the Tamper Evidence Contest is that uh, you're a CIA operative and you intercepted some material that was intended for uh, an IRA group uh, that contains propaganda and various secret codes. And your job is to get into the box, figure out what's in there, modify the propaganda, and then put it all back without it looking like you did anything. Um, so. One thing that was in the top of the box was this little um, electric device. And it's basically an accelerometer with a light. And um, it's also got a, a sound sent or a sound uh, emitter on it. And what would happen is, anytime you disturbed the box, it would beep. And if you disturbed it long enough, it would, <coughs> excuse me, it would maintain a, a steady hum. And if you took the battery out and put it back in, it would go to even a louder and higher pitch. Yeah, this is really annoying. Yes, I don't know if you guys can hear that. It's, I, I'm going to take the battery out now. <laughs> But it's really annoying, and that was sitting right here in the top, so you could see the light um, on top of the box. Uh, there was also a plastic evidence bag with an envelope and a medicine bottle, two sealed envelopes, um, a box with more void tape, and then a variety of physical devices. And the way these worked was they were all on one chain, 
and then there was another blank chain. And the idea was to get them from one chain to the other without it looking like you did anything. So I got <clears throat> three of the challenges. One of them was the zip tie. Who here is not trumpeting with unlocking zip ties? It, it's, it's really easy. Anyone can do it. It took 30 seconds. And then there was these other ones that took a while. Um, but this one I actually I used a razor and I slid into it, pulled it out, put it on the other chain, super glued it back together, and then put it back in. And so you can kind of tell if you look really close, but you couldn't tell otherwise that I modified this at all. Um, so and then these were the, the metal challenges that I couldn't figure out. Um, so then this, what I did, it has two envelopes in it. I cut a slit in the side right along the edge so that I could re-glue it when I was done. Um, and it looks like crap now, because as I said, they ripped it, but you really couldn't tell that much when I put it back in the box that it was sealed. Yeah, and you got to remember that Zach walked into this without any tools or anything. It was just kind of like, here, you want to do it? Yeah, I, because one of the teams came with a full tool set and a chem lab. They used all kinds of chemicals, heat guns. I went to CVS and bought about $10 worth of equipment. So, um, uh, I, it, this is, I, I just want to say this was the most fun I've probably ever had at a con because it, I got to feel like James Bond for a couple of days. I was steaming open envelopes. Um, this, this envelope uh, had, a, had a sealed uh, top. So what I did was I steamed open the side to completely circumvent the tape and was able to get the equipment out. Um, and inside of these were just different propaganda bits, some codes, which I didn't have time to break. Um, uh, and then inside the box, there was a flash drive and a, a bottle sealed with wax. So I had to um, figure out what the password was for the flash drive and then get um, the wax off without looking like it. So inside of the wax bottle was this piece of tape, and there wasn't anything on it until I applied heat to it, and then there was invisible ink on there, and so it showed up. But I was using the hotel iron to do it, and so it leaked water, and I can't read what it says. Like, even after they, they used chemicals to reveal everything, you can't read it because it washed the ink off. So that was fantastic. Um, did, you, did you ever find out how you did well, I got 41 points. I have no idea what that means. I just remember that they, I remember they were admonishing the guy before you, and they're like, wow, you suck, this is really bad, and then you did a lot better than you did with a basic rudimentary knowledge. But it's not all about tools and equipment. It's about being, you know, sneaky, Yeah, basically. It, it's very much like, okay, for example, um, one of the things I did with the tape was I peeled off one corner so I could get in. Um, but it, it looked like it had been opened. Well, I happened to have a red Sharpie on me. So I went back through on the tape and Sharpied over the open parts and we put it back on and glued it. You really couldn't tell. I mean, if you looked really closely, you could see, but other than that, you couldn't, you couldn't see that um, it had been opened. And so when I turned the box back in, even though I had it open and I'd been screwing around in it for days, um, for two days, you couldn't tell that it had been opened once I turned it in. So. That's really cool. You want to pass around some of that stuff? Or? Well, if you're interested, if you're when interested, you're done, come up afterwards and I'll show you. So yeah, that was uh, most of the <laughs> ones. They had a they had a couple of floating sharks in the lockpicking village rooms, and someone would take the Steve Jobs mask on one of them. I thought that was kind of funny. And he made a friend. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, that's pretty much it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was really <laughs> informative in a lot of ways, and it wasn't that expensive. And it was good to get, you know, get together with a bunch of people that share the same interests as you do and want to do the same thing you do. Anyone have any questions about the convention? Chorcon is really cool because it's in San Diego. Um, I compared it to DEF CON earlier. I actually like Chorcon better than DEF CON because it's a lot smaller, and you get to know more people, you get to be in more talks. Um, and it's not in Vegas, which is not my favorite place. I like the gas lamp a lot more. Um, last year, one of the things we did externally outside of the con was we went to Brazilian barbecue, which is basically Mendez's version of Hell on Earth. So um, it's, a, it's a whole bunch of, it, they, they bring up slaps of meat, and they'll bring it to your table, and it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. And I, I just love the environment. I love going to the con. I love interacting with people. Um, and then at the same time, you get to do all those fun things, and you learn a lot. So it's really a cool event. All right. Um, Chris, you had an announcement, I think, from someone? Oh, uh, yeah. There's a... All right.
Real quick, while you're they're doing that, there's a badge floating around still. I'd like to get a badge. It's a badge. Oh. It's a badge. Okay. Did everyone get a chance to look at it? Look at it. Okay. Ooh, an update's ready. So my name is Joseph Waxer. I'm lead of a student competition called uh, AUVSI SUAS. And basically what we're doing is we're building an autonomous vehicle that is going to detect uh, targets on the ground and autonomously identify what those targets are. So this is our aircraft here that we're actually going to use. Um, this is the part you're going to be interested in going the next slide. Um, we do work in the laboratories. Uh, generally, we work in the structures lab over in building 13, which is actually the art building. Um, it's opposite of uh, the bathrooms. Uh, if you go down one hall, there's bathrooms. If you go down the other direction, there's this door that's usually closed. Uh, if it's open, we're in there. So basically, the point of this competition, like I said, uh, we want to, the, the ideal situation is to push a button, and this plane would fly around in the air, and it would take pictures or video of the ground, and there are four foot by four foot to two foot by two foot targets that have an alphanumeric letter on them, two colors, a heading direction, GPS location, and I think there's six overall characteristics. And the idea is that either on board or on the ground, this year we're working on, uh, for an on the ground uh, station, uh, is to identify what those targets are and their colors and stuff like that. So the thing that I think you guys would be interested in is and as the uh, computer science side of that, where um, actually Chris is on the, our team this year, where we're using the program OpenCV to try and identify what those targets are, and then relay it into basically like a text file that displays what the, what the targets actually are. Um, this is a multidisciplinary project. We have aerospace students, we have um, electrical engineers, computer science engineers, computer, uh, computer engineering, and uh, we actually have one mechanical engineer this year. So basically, this is just an opportunity to uh, come and expand your knowledge. And uh, for uh, there's also one other new challenge for the, this competition this year that wasn't there last year, where there's a um, antenna on the ground, and there's, I guess, some kind of system hooked up to it where it's going to send us data packets. And we're supposed to receive those packets on the aircraft and transmit it back down to the plane. So uh, if anyone's interested in any of that kind of stuff, uh, you can either email me at go. Um, this is the same slide I used for the aerospace guys, so it's all more plain pictures. But um, you can email me at jawaxter at csupomona.edu, or I guess maybe perhaps talk to Chris, because I think he's going to be meeting up with us all the time. Uh, you can even just come out and watch us fly, or just kind of see what this, the kind of stuff that Chris is working with, or see the kind of software we're using. Um, Honestly, uh, it's all volunteer work, so there's not really a whole lot of commitment to it, but we do appreciate it if people show up more often. Um, as far as the actual competition, only 11 people can go, so um, the more committed people are going to be the people who are chosen for the actual competition. Cool, thanks. So if you're interested in that, contact either Chris or... Yeah. <laughs> So all of is going to give you guys a quick intro on IRC. We've seen some of you already uh, pop in there, uh, but I'm just going to give you a, just a quick primer just in case you need one. Does everyone know what IRC is? Yes. I don't know. Okay. IRC is basically how hackers communicate. No. Um, no. <laughs> um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's internet relay chat, and it's a way for people to get together in a, a forum. It's basically a group chat area, so everyone comes in and talks. Um, oh, yeah, you got it. So, I was stumbling while you were in your presentation. No, no, you go finish. Okay, but you just explained it all. It's like a group chat thing. Um, your screen is a program within Unix, Linux, whatever. But that you have a terminal inside of a terminal, so you can work on things. And if you're disconnected, those things will keep working while you're not there anymore. IRSSI is a, a pretty popular um, IRC client among Linux users because it's simple and easy and customizable, and it's what's already on the servers at Capali, so we'll just use that. So the theory is you SSH into your login server on Does everyone know what SSH is? <laughs> SSH is a secure shell. It's basically a way to log in remotely to a Unix system. 
Securely. Securely, yeah. So not all MP2 stuff is being passed by plain text like Telnet or RSA. A shell would be a command line interface. Thank you, Gradius. Um, if you guys don't know this sort of stuff, you should join us on Friday for Linux Install Fest, which is supposed to be in the slides, but the old version was where it was blah, blah, blah. Anyway, Friday here, 5 o'clock, 10 o'clock, we're going to be having Linux Install Fest. There's going to be food, there's going to be other things like that, so if you want to come, get Linux on your computer, or help us configure, or have us help you configure it, then come here Friday at 5. PM. Come to March. <laughs> I put that back because you're talking about the consoles and your screen. And right. Sorry. Ah, oh, sorry. So, in theory, you SSH your login server on campus, you start a screen session of IRSSI, then you connect to Freedom's IRC network, and you can attach and detach from wherever you are whenever you want to. You can be idle to channel, which is what most of us always do. So, for this, I'm assuming most people in here use Windows. So you download either Putty or Putty Tray, use a Mac or Linux, it's got SSH built into terminal, so you're good to go. You open up Putty, you would put in right here the login.cxmonitor.edu, which you all have accounts on because you're Cal Poly students, hopefully. <laughs> you can also um, enter a name here and save it, so it's easier to start up again next time you connect. Yes, you never read that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Type in your username, password, and you're in. So now you do a screen. I'm also going to do a demo just so you guys know what's going on kind of quick. You screen IRSSI to start a screen session of IRSSI, the program. And once that starts up, you slash connect the network, which is irc.freedom.net. Then you Slash J for join, pound switch, and you're in. Now, to attach and detach, it's really simple. You control A, D on the keyboard. We can't say the keyboard. Shut up. It's too short. But yes, yeah, press and hold control A, D to de detach it. Okay. Would that be control A, control B, or control A, let go of control and then press D? They both work. Oh. <laughs> and that will detach you from your screen session. Now you can log out and be safe. When you log back in, you just type screen dash capital R D, and that'll reattach it and detach it remotely if you attach it somewhere else and then forget forgot to detach it. So demo. Now Firefox. So the point of screen when uh, you're using IRSSI, because IRSSI is the program that runs IRC. What Screen does is it basically says, um, when you log into a Linux session, you have um, that just that session of, of Linux, and if you were to log in from a different computer, then it wouldn't be that same session. So what Screen allows you to do is access your login to IRSSI from any machine. So quick Google search of Pi, you click on the first one, off the website. Find download up here in the top right almost. Putty is useful for anything where you're trying to connect through SSH to a machine. There, here's the Windows. You can tell it's 32 bit. Save it wherever you want to. Now we have Putty over there. So, who of you have already showed up on the IRC channel? Anyone? Well, I, yes, I know that people that have been in my love for years are already there, but anyone new? Yeah, okay. Like, I recognize puddles, and I recognize bars, and I don't recognize your nick. I need a new one. I haven't come up with one yet. Oh, okay. But you showed up? Yeah. Okay. So, you know what it's about. You know why we have this. It's not only a social thing, but you can get help with stuff. There. there are lots of knowledgeable people that hang out there. You can also get trolled pretty hard. <laughs> because there are lots of snarky people there. So yeah, if you want, you can save lots of sessions here and just don't put it there later and you'll open up. Don't read that anyway. <laughs> don't do that at CCDC. <laughs> don't just click yes. <laughs> and now green. So you just log into the Cal Poly servers. Yeah. Which I went by that guy, Joe. He's a 
Sure. <laughs> and now what we're doing is we're going to start a session of IRSSI in screen. Screen IRSSI. Brings up. Uh, take the font bigger. Change the color scheme. How do I? Change settings. Appearance. Why are you changing? Oh, that on. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> there you go. Now you can see it. Yeah. Close slash. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.